Next, I'd like to ask two of his uh, very dear friends to come on up, Alfredo and Dan Bonsanti. Well, I want to thank um, Peter for putting this together for all his friends and I know he would love he would have loved to see all of us here. And I gotta tell you, um, as we all know Larry many years, I, I was lucky enough to hang with him a lot the last four or five years with baseball games and I would invite him to my opera concerts and, and I was just so amazed at what an intelligent guy like I, every time I go over and take a six pack and and I tell him, you know, that's for the lesson I'm going to learn today. <laughs> I get out of there learning the world history or anything from Mozart, Shostakovich, and, you know, he me books. So he was just an amazing uh, genius that uh, we all know, and, and we're all going to miss him very much. And, but I know we'll never forget him. And, uh, and we'll always have him in our heart. Yeah. Here, here. It's hard to uh, believe that it. it's been about 40 years since uh, two scrawny looking um, guys with baseball hats walked into a Baker's Dozen rehearsal in North Dade Community College rehearsal room um, with some music and score tucked under their arm, something called Domingo, and uh, had us slaughter one of his uh, first original compositions that Larry had. Had meticulously gone over with uh, uh, with him, and uh, those of us that were there that day had a chance to experience uh, the very beginning of what we now recognize as one of the most outstanding collaborations of, uh, uh, in jazz of the 20th century. And over the years, uh, many of us here uh, were beneficiaries of the developing partnership. Uh, as the Peter Graves Orchestra, the Elania Driftwood Band, the Word of Mouth Big Band, and most recently the Jocko Pastorius Big Band. And Larry impacted our music in so many ways, uh, a sound engineer, every imaginable setting, the old nightclubs of the Bachelors <coughs> Three and Musicians Exchange, and all the countless outdoor concerts and festivals, and like the Sanibel Jazz Festivals for nearly 20 years, theaters, uh, with instrumental and vocal ensembles of every size imaginable. He supported us in the control room and studios, the inroads uh, studios, uh, criteria in the ear, just to name a few. And then Larry sound engineering made us sound better than we often deserved. And it's no wonder why his mere presence at a gig or in the studio made us excited to play. And uh, his meticulous copy works sure made it easier to perform and his arrangements and orchestrations made us want to play at the highest potential that uh, we could. And although um, his collaborations with Jocko are understandably the shining star of what will be Larry's legacy, um, his musical contributions to the University of Miami Jazz Ensembles, in particular uh, an ensemble called the Studio Jazz Ensemble, uh, some beautiful works he did for, for that group, and then his work in relationship with Stan Webb uh, for many years, uh, such close buddies. Um, it's hard to think of uh, Larry without thinking about his association and partnership with, with uh, Stan Webb, with Mike Lewis all these years, and um, the countless orchestrations and arrangements, partnership, partnership with Peter, uh, that represent a wealth of accomplishments, an incredible a legacy.